So you're a freshman or a sophomore or a junior or even a senior in college or maybe you've already graduated college or maybe you didn't even go to college. Maybe you went to a boot camp somewhere or you taught yourself how to code and now you're looking to land your dream job at one of the top tech companies out there. Hey there, my name is Uma and in this video, I'll be giving you some tips and strategies to help you land interviews at top tech companies. Without further delay, let's jump into it. Before we begin, I want to set a disclaimer and say that everything I will say in this video is based on my experience and what has helped me personally get interviews with a lot of tech companies. I also want to take some time to recognize that everybody's path to becoming a developer or learning how to code is completely different. And I will do my best in this video to relate tips and strategies that apply to a broad range of people. With that, let's get into the first strategy. You need to show that you know how to code. By this, I mean you need to find a way to apply what you've learned in the classroom to actual projects. It doesn't matter what it is, you just need to work on something, preferably something outside class. And the easiest way to do this is to work on personal project. It may be a side project or even a smaller internship somewhere. My first project was a web calculator from 2017 and it sucked. It was really bad, but it was a start and it got me my first job where I worked on an application that had real life impact. All this does is show a recruiter or a hiring manager that you can code. You can apply everything you've learned in the class or things you've learned by yourself to an actual project. It also shows drive and initiative. At the end of the day, some sort of experience is what a lot of these companies are looking for. As someone who has had multiple development jobs, I can assure you that you will learn some things on the job, but there are also things that you are expected to know and the only way to know these things is by practicing. Everyone knows how to code because we all learned how to code. We took classes, but a lot of tech companies want to see you applying what you've learned. Yes, you may know Python, but what tangible thing have you done with Python that can apply to a real world scenario? A person with a modest GPA or even without a GPA at all, but with a decent amount of projects showing how they've applied what they've learned and gradually gotten better with the complexity of their projects is a lot better than someone with a high GPA but no project at all. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the experience and the initiative. I will leave links down in the description below to projects you can start working on and their difficulties as well. Again, it may be something small and simple, but all you have to do is start and progressively make it more challenging and show that you are learning. And if you've already been working on personal projects, awesome, keep working on them that will definitely pay off in the future. This leads me to the second tip or the second strategy. Put your work out there, finished or unfinished. Have a portfolio of all the projects you've done, even if they're small, put it out there. Over time, you will have a list of projects that show how you've improved as a developer. There are projects that you started but didn't finish for one reason or another, and that's okay. It may have been more complicated than you thought or you didn't plan correctly, and that's fine. The idea behind it is that you document the process and you learn from it. It's also much better for people to interact with your work than to hear about it. So if you can deploy a finished project, deploy it. When I went to career fairs and recruiters asked me about the projects on my resume, I would pull up my phone and show them the functioning applications. This set me apart from other people and nine out of 10 times, I would get interviews and move on to the next round. When I applied online, I put the link to my portfolio on there and on my resume as well. And when I interviewed with companies, most of the questions I got were regarding the projects that I put on my portfolio. People got to interact with what I built. And again, that's what set me apart from others. It doesn't have to be a crazy portfolio. Something simple works. This is the template that I've been using for my portfolio. For each of the projects that I've worked on, I have a picture or logo of the project. I also have a description, the title, the year that I made it and what type of project it is. When you click on one of them, it goes into the project. For each one, again, I have a description, the motivation, what led me to work to the project, what I learned from it, and if I have any screenshots, I attach it to it as well. At the end of the day, depending on the project, if it's live, I leave a direct link to the project so whoever is looking at it can find it. For projects that I didn't finish, I also put a reason why I didn't finish it and what I learned from that process as well. I also have a lot more tabs on the website here, but the main one is just the portfolio page for people who are interested in the projects that I've built to see what I've done. Trust me, it goes a long way. The third point I want to give is to get a LinkedIn account and know how to use it. 
If you don't know anything about LinkedIn, it's literally a social network for professionals. And it's one of the greatest and most powerful tools you can use to get jobs, especially at top tech companies. From job postings to searching for recruiters at a specific company, LinkedIn has it all. There are two things that I want to focus on for LinkedIn. The first is your profile. Pimp up your profile. Add all your experiences there, including past and present experiences, technical or non-technical. Explain your role for each of them and go into as much detail as you can. It's not capped at one page like a resume so you can add a lot of information. Those bullet points that didn't make it onto your resume should make it on here. Any certifications you have, any online courses you've taken, add them here as well. It shows learning and your pursuit for knowledge. The next feature is recommendations. This is a feature that's often slept on on LinkedIn. If your previous supervisors are on LinkedIn, you can reach out to them and ask them to give you a recommendation and it shows up on your profile. You can even ask your college professors or other instructors you've had to and again, it all shows up at your profile when a recruiter is looking at it. Fun fact, recruiters from tech companies can see everyone's profile on LinkedIn. They can also filter based on specific criteria that they're looking for. You can also state that you're open or looking for a job on LinkedIn so recruiters know they can contact you. And trust me, they definitely contact you. Whether you're open to connecting or not, as long as your profile matches the information they're looking for, they definitely reach out to you. So the more information you have on there, the easier it is for them to find you. The second point about LinkedIn is that you can use it as a tool to search for recruiters at a specific company that you want to work for. Then reach out to them with a constructive message. Depending on how you frame the message, some may reply, but most of them won't. But at the end of the day, all you need is one person to reply. I came across this post on LinkedIn from a recruiter with a template on how you can contact them. You can use it to spark a conversation with them, send them a constructive message like the one in the template here, or ask them how you can be a better candidate for a role they have open. Or better still, you can tell them why you're a good candidate and what you have to offer. I cannot overestimate how important LinkedIn is to the whole process. I have friends who have gotten interviews from LinkedIn because a recruiter or a hiring manager saw their profile and liked it. The final tip I want to give is to apply and make sure you apply at the right time. Bigger tech companies usually have hiring periods that start at the end of summer and end sometime in the spring depending on the company. This is your window. Don't wait till the end of the hiring season or even till the middle of the hiring season. Start right at the beginning. They probably receive millions of resumes every year and I'm not even sure if a person looks at them, but you still need to apply. To get noticed, you need to optimize your resume to have specific keywords that they are looking for. And that's a video for another day, but at the end of the day, the whole process starts from applying. If you have been applying and it's not working out for you, find a way to get yourself in front of a recruiter. Either via contacting them on LinkedIn with the template I mentioned, or finding a conference that have career fairs and going to them. It's a lot easier to see someone and explain to them face to face than to send a piece of paper that they might not even read. I have been where you are and I know how frustrating it is to hear your colleagues or your friends getting interviews and offers and it feels like you're not going anywhere and you're being ignored. At the end of the day, all it takes is one person. These companies are multi-billion dollar companies with thousands of employees, but all it takes is one person to see your profile and say, yes, I want to interview this person and give him a chance and trust me, that time is coming. All you have to do is prepare and make yourself better, show genuine interest in coding by applying what you've learned to projects, and make sure you're easy to find. Some bigger tech companies usually interview you every year, so once you get their attention once, they keep coming back like clockwork. But at the end of the day, know you're worth it. Your first position may not be at a tech company, and that's okay. Several people who I know did not intern or start their careers at top tech companies, but are currently working in one of them right now, including myself. Once you get that first opportunity, it makes getting the next one easier and recruiters will keep coming back. It doesn't happen overnight, or maybe you may be lucky, but with time, the right mindset, and all the tips that I've mentioned in these videos, those interview requests will start coming in. If you have any other advice or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. The second part to this video is tips and strategies to help you ace the technical interview and get an offer. I will leave a link to that video down in the description when it becomes available. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.